Hi guys, this is the lesson for 2.07. Today we're having a take a pause day. So our session is going to be recorded. So first things first, a peek at the week. Yesterday we worked on 2.05, the write an analysis activity. Remember that this analysis 2.05 is due on Friday. If you are in our live session, and you filled out the Google form, that is the way that you'll get credit for it. If you were not in our live session, or if you didn't fill out the Google form from writing or watching the recording, then you absolutely have to turn in 2.05 into the Dropbox by Friday. So today's Tuesday, we're gonna go over uh, lesson 2.07 in this recording. If you watch the recording and fill out the exit ticket, then you are all set. You don't have to go through the lesson. Tomorrow will be um, just a review day, so we'll talk about what we've done this week. Thursday we will, uh, actually Wednesday you're going to have to read Water Never Hurt a Man. Thursday we're going to talk at length about this story um, in the characterization within the story and how that leads into the theme. And then Friday, same thing. Um, you will have had to read Marigolds the night before and we'll talk about uh, characterization within this story and then the theme within this story. The only things you have due this week are the 2.09 quiz that you'll take on Friday and then 2.05 graded assignment from Monday um, that's due Friday and then you'll have exit tickets every day. So we're in lesson 2.07 under unit 2. The ICANN statements, so your objectives, synthesize understanding of characterization and theme and then define elements of direct and indirect characterization. And characterization is how characters are revealed to the reader. Um, we're going to be analyzing how complex characters develop over the course of a text. So first things first, let's get the 60 second English video up and running. Writers like Maribel have something to say. Maribel uses characters to develop her theme. Let's take a look at Maribel's story. Maribel the pirate was new to the crew of treasure hunters. She and the crew searched the island for treasure. Maribel broke away from the pirates while they slept, and she found the treasure they were after. Maribel realized she could escape from this nasty crew of pirates, but Maribel had pledged to share any treasure she found. That was the pirate's code. So she gave the diamond to the pirate captain. The captain was surprised. Arg! Why didn't you keep the treasure? Me mates would never have known. I thought about taking it, but it would be unfair to everyone else. I'm part of your team. The captain praised Maribel for her integrity. He realized Maribel was someone he could trust. Maribel used her character's actions and what the other characters said about her to create a strong characterization. And the way that character behaved suggests a theme. Behaving with integrity creates trust and reaps rewards. Okay, so we're going to look at some comprehension questions from that video. It's very important that you get out a piece of paper so that you can take some notes on the lesson because the exit ticket quiz is going to be directly related to the answers that you provide during this lesson. So we're not going to ask you the specific questions again on the exit ticket. We're simply going to ask you what was the answer to uh, question number three. So it's really important that you get out a piece of paper and take some notes. I'll give you a second. Okay, here's the first question. Here's the passage. For years, Juliet's mother had been telling her that flying in an airplane was a pleasant experience. But Juliet wasn't convinced. She had never flown, so by the time she was 15 and scheduled to fly alone to see her aunt in Man Montana, Juliet was a nervous wreck. Her mother had packed some snacks into a bag and handed it to the tear-streaked Juliet as she walked onto the plane, looking back forlornly at her mother. When Juliet called that evening from Montana, her mother was shocked at her voice. I did it, Mom, Juliet squealed, and I'm so excited that I get to fly again when I come home in a week. You may remember this passage. Here's the question. Which statement represents an accurate inference about the theme of the passage? What do you think? So you should have taken some time. You have A, B, C, or D. Write down your answer on your sheet of paper. The answer is B, that facing fear can lead to confidence. So the answer to question number one is B. 
facing fear can lead to confidence. Here's the next question. Here's question number two. How do readers determine what a character's traits are? Take a few seconds to answer the question. How do readers determine a character's traits? What do they do? So if you answered C, readers find evidence for the traits such as in the things the characters do and say, you are in fact correct. So the answer to number two is C. Make sure that you write that down. That might be asked on the exit ticket. And then the question number three, how can characterization help to develop the theme of a narrative? What do you think? Take a few seconds, answer the question, write your answer down. So if you answered B, the reader can draw a conclusion about the author's message based on the results of the character's actions. And the biggest thing that we learn from characters is what they've learned. Okay. So how can characterization help to develop the theme of a narrative? And you may have thought that C was the answer, but generally at the end of stories, main characters do not simply come out and discuss what they have learned. What characters learn throughout a story is extremely important, but nobody really generally comes out and states what has been learned. Okay. So in the little clip, the 60 second clip, the character, we learned about the character that she's very trustworthy and honest, but we learned that indirectly. Nobody ever said it. So let's watch the English cast really quickly. hi -o. It's Olivia. It's raining, so I'm going to stay in and put together this jigsaw puzzle. It's going to be a picture of puppies. I love puppies. It doesn't look like puppies now, but the more pieces I put together, the more I'll see the whole picture. It got me thinking about how an author develops a story's theme. It's kind of like a puzzle. You take a character and add up some traits to make a characterization. Those characterizations can play a big part in determining the theme of a story. The theme is the main message an author wants to communicate. To show you what I mean, let's put together one character's puzzle. Characters are made up of what they say and do. The choices characters make and how they treat people also make up who they are. Those traits equal a characterization or a complete picture of a character. That picture gives us an idea of the story's theme. Now, let's piece together the puzzle of Ebenezer Scrooge, the main character in Charles Dickens' novel, A Christmas Carol. We'll split up characterization into two types, direct and indirect. Direct characterization is what the narrator or another character says about a character. In the beginning of the story, the narrator calls Scrooge hard and sharp as flint, from which no steel had ever struck out generous fire. That means that Scrooge is stingy and mean. At the end of the book, the narrator says Scrooge became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city knew. So by the end of the story, Scrooge is kind and generous. An indirect characterization is something that the character himself says or does in the story. In the beginning, Scrooge refuses to give money to the poor for Christmas. That goes along with being stingy and mean. But at the end of the story, Scrooge gives a lot of money to the poor. A perfect match to being kind and generous. We have two pieces for who Scrooge was at the beginning of the story and two pieces for who Scrooge was at the end. Put those pieces together and we get a clearer view or understanding of the theme of the story. In this case, the theme of the story is, it's never too late to change. Look, it stopped raining. I said I'd finish this puzzle, but now I'll go outside for a bike ride. I guess I'd rather get out and enjoy the sunshine while I can. How's that for indirect characterization? Okay, so in the English cast, you should have learned about characterization, the ways in which characters are developed, so the ways in which we learn about the characters. Protagonist is the main character. Antagonist is the character or force against the main character. Um, indirect characterization is dialogue, so ways in which we learn about the characters 
indirectly. So we have to make inferences. The, the narrator doesn't come right out and say something about the character. The way the characters act is indirect characterization. Direct characterization is when they come right out and say it. So for instance, he was tall and thin. That helps us to know directly that the character is tall and thin. A complex character is one who uh, has is very well developed um, with positive and negative traits, um, conflicting motivations, and it's generally a main character of some sort, either protagonist or antagonist. Okay, remember the antagonist is a major character who sometimes blocks uh, the protagonist's work. Okay, most authors develop more multifaceted characters to create rich and thought provoking stories. Protagonists are seldom purely good, they often have like background motivations. Here's an example of direct and indirect characterization, telling this is showing. So I'm going to read this passage really quickly. Mr. Hooper had the reputation of a good preacher, but not an energetic one. He strove to win his people's heavenward by mild, uh, pervasive or persuasive influences rather than to drive them thither by the thunders of the word. The sermon which he now delivered was marked by the same characteristics of style and manner as the general series of his pulpit oratory. But there was something, either in the sentiment of the discourse itself or in the imagination of the auditors, which made it greatly the most powerful effort that they had ever heard from their pastor's lips. It was tinged rather more darkly than usual with the gentle gloom of Mr. Hooper's temperament. So here are some examples of direct characterization. He was a good preacher, but not energetic. So his reputation, he's a good preacher. That's very direct. It's just a big statement. He used mild, persuasive methods. His current sermon contained more imagination and power than usual. He had a gently gloomy temperament. So very, very direct. We don't have to make inferences about the preacher. Indirect characterization. Angelica, frowning deeply, was raking the field, stabbing at the leaves and soil with every stroke. She thought about that morning and how she could see the bus driver's yellow teeth, teeth when he laughed at her. Watching Angelica from a distance, Lynn thought she had never seen her sister move with that much force. So indirectly, we can assume that Angelica is angry. We don't know why she's angry. Her behavior, she's maybe easily angered. Um, so we're, we're making indirect uh, references and inferences about her. Um, indirect char characterization reveals characters' traits through um, the way that they look, not directly stated, the things that they say, the relationships they have with characters. So if they don't have a lot of friends, we could assume maybe that they're um, an introvert. Um, we can assume maybe that their characters have stopped being friends with them. Um, their actions. So if a kid's walking down the street, he throws rocks at cats. We can assume he's probably not the nicest kid in the world. And that the, their thoughts. So the way that they think about things, that's, that's indirectly characterizing a character. Um, and then we're going to move on to this. The theme of a written work is the main message that an author wants to communicate to the reader. Authors rarely state their themes flat out. Instead, they develop themes in various ways. One way they do this is through the creation and the development of the characters. So what we learn about the characters, what the characters learn about themselves. So if a character changes or learns something, that probably has to do with the themes. Characters reveal theme through what they say or believe, the choices they make, their interactions with others, because those characters are the ones that drive the story. So the theme is developed through the character. So thank you for sticking with us. It was a very short lesson. Today's exit ticket quiz. This is imperative. It shows that you watched the recording. It's October 11th exit ticket. The password is Lakeland. And make sure you have your notes available when taking the quiz because the questions are very, very vague and they pertain directly to the questions that we went over in class. See you on Wednesday.